Hello and welcome to another worship opportunity here at Fairview Lutheran Church, where we celebrate this weekend Christ the King. Uh, we celebrate that He is King in our lives. Uh, let us do so with the singing of a stanza of our opening hymn. Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sins and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. We continue with our second stanza for today. portion of God's word for our meditation this weekend is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15 beginning at verse 20. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through one man, the resurrection of the dead came, comes also through one man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will, make, will be made alive. But each in his own turn. Christ the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him, then the end will come. When he hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For he has put everything under his feet. Now, when he says that everything has been put under him, it is clear that this does not include God himself, who put everything under Christ. When he has done this, then the Son himself will be made subject to him, who put everything under him, so that God may be all in all. This is the word of our Lord. We continue and singing another stanza of our hymn for today.
entire section of scripture for our meditation uh, this morning earlier. Let me just read uh, a section that you'll find on your screen. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For he has put everything under his feet. So far the words of our Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, fellow redeemed children of God. I, I think I, I know what the problem is with our current, our future, with our past leadership. That, that there is a legitimate reason why we as individuals chafe under leadership. Because it, in my 46 years of life, I have not known a perfect leader. I have not known a leader that has not been imperfect. Whether you call them commissioner, or chancellor, uh, el jefe, el presidente, president, chief, governor, governor, whatever you call them, and however you say it, there has not been in my lifetime, nor yours, an imperfect. And a, a, a leader that has not been imperfect. And I'm not talking about ideological differences in size. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about just the fact that within their lifetime, they have done things that weren't perfect. They have failed. And sometimes they have failed miserably. Sometimes they have failed publicly. But they have all had moments of failure. And, and you and I know that about them. And so when they write down laws and then they have regulations and they put forth things, we know that that can't be perfect because it's coming from someone who is imperfect. And so we start to maybe distrust or, or not like and then chafe under that leadership. Not only do we know that they're not perfect, we also know that because they're not perfect, that they probably don't always have all of us in mind all the time, or you might say it more specifically to yourself, they don't have me in mind all the time when they make decisions and they make laws and they say things and they regulate things. Because they're not perfect, they won't have me in mind all the time. And so when they make laws, when they pass laws, when they regulate things, I might change because I don't trust that it's for me or it's for my best or for my good. And I don't trust them a little bit because I know they're sinful and that they're not perfect. And so they, they have moments of failure. They'll fail again in some way. And, and I say that because I think people are wondering what's wrong with our, our leadership in the world, in, in, our, in our state, in our, in our city. And, and that's the answer, that they're not perfect. They fail and they don't always have our best interest in mind because they're not perfect. But it's not just them, right? It's not just the leaders that, that hold office or that are somewhere else. It, it starts in homes because fathers and mothers are, are supposed to be the leaders of their homes. But there are, are times when, when mom or, or dad or both of them have failed in the child. And the child tends to, to trust them less because of that failure. They, they said they would be there at a certain time and they don't show up. But they said they would buy this for them or get this for them and, and, and they don't get it for that child and so there's less trust because they failed. And, and sometimes they, the, the parents are actually selfish and they're not looking out for the child's best interest. They're, 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 they're neglectful in some way because Mom is more concerned about dad than the child, or dad for mom than the child. Or more about their job, or, or their work, or their retirement than the, than the child. And so that child starts to not appreciate all of the, 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 the rules of the house and, and, and the commands of, of parents because they start to, to see cracks in the armor and the, the failures of an, an imperfect person. And, it's not just in, in homes, it happens in jobs where bosses should be really wondering, how do I make this environment the best for my employee to, to appreciate and to do good work in? But, but sometimes that boss is just trying to, to, to keep their job. 
And so it's less about their employee or their the under people under them. It's about what they need to do to show that they're doing good enough and, and that their boss appreciates them. And so they don't have the best interest of those who are under them in mind. And, and so we chafe under that sometimes and we don't appreciate the rules. And they say that, that well, if we do work hard these four days, Monday through Thursday, we'll have Friday off. And then that Friday comes and we're still called in to work. And we don't appreciate it. They say, well, if we do this, we'll get a bonus and, and we get a, a gift card to the uh, local quick trip. We, we don't appreciate it. We, we chafe under that leadership. It's all throughout. In, in sports, there's a term for it. They, they say the coach lost the locker room. <laughs> no, the locker room didn't change positions or locations in the world. The coach isn't trying to GPS an actual locker room. What it means is that those players in that locker room who may have once thought, I believe the rhetoric, I believe the, 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 the ideas, I believe the, the scheme of the coach have, for whatever reason, become disillusioned and they, don't, they no longer want to run through the wall for that coach. And so he's lost the confidence of the people in the locker room because as a leader, he's failed. And, and maybe he is selfish to try to keep his own job and for his own fame, for his own legacy instead of what's best for the team. And so all throughout the, the, the ladder of people who are put into leadership, who are supposed to look out for those who are beneath them, we have a, a lifetime of examples of failure in that. And so we chafe under that kind of leadership. And we don't like it, not one bit. That's why it's so great to hear the words of our text for today from 1 Corinthians. Because it reminds us at the very beginning that the reason we have this problem with leadership is because of the sin that's in the world. That, that like those leaders and like ourselves, we are born sinful. Sinful from conception. And so whether it's the leader or the one being led, we can assume that there'll be flaws and mistakes along the way because we're sinful. And because of that, we are all getting closer and closer to a time when we won't be here anymore and then we'll die because that's how death came into the world. We're told that off the bat. But, but then we're reminded of, of what God did and what God, how much God loves us. That He, he gave us a king that, that wouldn't let us down. He, he gave us Christ. That Christ came into this world and unlike the leaders of, of governments and of houses and of corporations, he is not failing. He, does, he doesn't have a flaw in what he did. He was perfect his entire life. But unlike the, the leaders of, of homes and corporations and, and governments, he is not selfish, but rather he did all of what he did, living his life and, and speaking to, 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 to those who are hurting and, and dying on the cross for our sins and, and, and promising the sinners of the Spirit. He did that all with us in mind. That, that Christ had you in mind when he walked this earth in perfection. In perfection, he walked this earth with you in mind. He walked this earth and he died on the cross with you in mind because he wanted you to know the Father. He, wanted you, he wants you to be saved. That's the, the king that we live under. And our, our king, who we are, we, who we belong to, our text says, he's perfect. So there's no reason to distrust him. He, he has always had you in mind. There's no reason to chafe under his commands, and he gives us commands. When he was asked what are the greatest commandments, he said, the first one is, have loved God above all things. And those who are his enemies, who, who, he's, who he's pushing down, who he's keeping underfoot, they don't like that law. They don't like that command. Like, they want to honor self. And I don't want to put God first. I want to honor my money. And they don't want to put God first. I want to honor this other person. And, and so they put other things ahead of God, and they don't want to follow that command. But for you and for me, it is a joyous command. Because I trust that Jesus is telling me me this for my good. And so my new man inside of me rejoices when Christ my King says, love God above all things because 
I want to use his name to give honor and praise and glory. And I don't want to misuse it or abuse it or neglect it. And I look forward to coming to his house to worship and to gather around his word with other believers and, and hear his word speak to my heart and give me comfort and let me know what, what peace really feels like. I, I want that. Because he has changed me. Through watering the word, he has changed me. And he has made me his through his blood on the cross. He has made me a citizen of his kingdom. And so as my king, I, I rejoice in his law. And then he says, the second one is love your neighbor above all things. And then the world doesn't want to hear that. They, I'm not loving my neighbor. You mean the guy that doesn't know when to cut his grass? You mean my neighbor who wants a loud dog that barks when I'm trying to sleep? The, the neighbor who parks his car just a little bit into my, over my driveway so I have to back out on my lawn instead of, I, I, can't, I can't love my neighbor. But, but you and I have been changed and they no longer see things from a worldly point of view. We, we hear that command and, and we know that we can trust that it's for our best. That Christ has us in mind when he tells us to, to not be greedy or covetous and want our neighbor's things and, and try to get them in a dishonest way. We, should, we rejoice and we understand that it's for our good that God says, this is how I want you to use your body in, in, in regard to your sexual life within marriage bounds. That, that we trust our, our king when he says, you know, I don't want you to, to hurt or harm your neighbor, but, but to, to, to love your neighbor. And, Take his, his words, everything he says, his actions, and in the kindest possible way. And I can rejoice in that command, even though it may not always be easy, because I know that my Savior, my King, who died for my sins, who, who had me in mind when, from, from the very beginning of creation, I know that he says it's for my good. That, that's why, for us, we don't have to fear like the enemies of Christ, that being under his feet is not a, a fearful thing. That he, he's, he's not going to destroy us, but rather give us life eternal. And so we can have comfort and peace. That being under Christ's feet, being under a king who is perfect and loving and has you in mind, gives us so much comfort as we look forward to his second coming, well, he'll give us eternal comfort, eternal peace with him in heaven. May God bless you as we find comfort under the feet of Jesus. Amen. Uh, this weekend in our prayers, we want to keep in mind what has happened in our city and, and at Mayfair Mall, the, uh, the violence, uh, the, the act of criminality that has, has wounded many. Uh, we want to pray for that situation and we will do so. We also pray for our, our member, Gail, who is uh, recovering from a uh, fall she took uh, two weeks ago, and also for sharing our our sister who is still recovering from her heart surgery. Uh, Lord, we also want to ask that you be with um, our community as we go into the, the week of Thanksgiving, that you keep us safe and that you allow us to um, enjoy family, but be mindful of, of the safety that we're trying to have. So let us bow our heads and pray that God would, would, would answer us. Heavenly Father, we come to you uh, this Weekend, and we ask that you be with all those who were at Mayfair Mall and had to endure uh, a lockdown situation uh, because of the shooting that occurred. Lord, we also want to ask that you be with those who were who were wounded, uh, who were shot. We thank you that their lives were spared. And so, Lord, as they have more time here on earth, for those that don't know you, Lord, send them people in their lives to to share your message of love through Christ with them. For those that do know you, know you, Lord, may this be a moment where they rely on you even more and find strength in your word. Lord, we pray for all of them that you would give them the, 
the strength of body that they might recover from their injury and, and live out their lives. Heavenly Father, we also, also want to pray for uh, our community uh, as we uh, endure another uh, violent act. Help us see the wisdom in, in loving one another uh, and, and doing as you say to us that we should be uh, uh, loving to all of those who live, who are our neighbors. Lord, we also pray for Gail, our sister, your daughter in Christ, who is, is recovering from a fall. Uh, Lord, we thank you that she did not break any bones. We pray that you would give her a swift healing and that she could return to us soon. We also pray for, for, for Sharon, that she might continue to progress in her recovery from her surgery. Uh, that you give her uh, and, and Gail both the strength of body, but then more importantly, Lord, to remind them of the spirit that you have living in them. May they, they gather strength in their faith because of that spirit. Hear us, Lord, as we bring to you now our private petitions. Let us join our voices in praying the prayer that our Savior taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. We close our worship with the final verse of our song for the day. Thank you for joining us for worship. I'm glad you found us online. You can just subscribe to our YouTube page or, or follow us on Facebook and, and find more offerings of God's word for your life to encourage you and uplift you. Uh, please do so. If you'd like to, to donate and, and give to this ministry, uh, you can do so through the Give Plus app. May God bless you as you find comfort under Christ your King.